everybody. I'm Brooke Gleason. I am on the worldwide public sector team and I focus on education. I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about some new skills that Alexa is picking up at Northeastern University. Um, you'll see these speakers here today. We have a couple folks from NPowered and two folks from Northeastern that'll be joining us as well. So I'm really excited to have them. First, we're just gonna kind of cover what we'll talk about in this 200 to 300 level session. We're gonna touch on some of the trends that we're seeing in voice in higher education and why we think this is so interesting at Amazon. Um, next, we'll just cover what Amazon is doing with Alexa for Business and how that's letting customers build voice experiences at scale and allowing them to manage Echo devices. So we'll give a couple examples when NPowered and Northeastern come to the stage and talk about the solution that they've built. Last, we'll leave you guys with a few thoughts on where we see this area going in the, in the future. And I think we'll have some really good ideas coming out of this session and can't wait to see what you're gonna build. I'm just gonna start by giving you a little background as to why we think voice is so interesting right now. So starting in the 1970s, we had character mode, pretty basic. In the 1980s, we had the addition of graphics and icons, so it became a little more interesting. You could get a little context. Um, in the 1990s, we had this thing called the internet. So that really changed how we do everything. Um, all of a sudden, information was at our fingertips, and people were able to connect with folks all over the world with all sorts of different pieces of information. In the early 2000s, we had the explosion of mobile devices, and it got really interesting in 2007 when the iPhone came onto the scene. And so that's, again, completely changed the way we communicate with each other, the way we work, the way we interact with all of the applications we use on a daily basis. Also really changed the way developers thought about building things in order to get people to really engage. And so we think voice is sort of this next shift that's really also changing the way that companies think about driving engagement with end users, with their employees, and with students. And it's not just us that thinks that. Um, Gartner said this year that in 2018, voice is one of the very top trends that they see, and this is going forward as well. So they think conversational platforms are really driving the next big paradigm shift in how humans interact with the digital world. And you'll hear this theme throughout our presentation because it's not just Gartner that said this, our customers are coming to us and telling us this, and you'll see this with what NPowered and Northeastern has built. It's really changing the way people are thinking about building and engaging with their users and with the students at Northeastern. So again, what's Amazon's piece in this puzzle? In November 2014, we launched the Amazon Echo device, which is a smart speaker that people were able to instantly start interacting with the things in their home. Using intuitive voice commands, they could do things like dim the lights, check the temperature, play music, and it, it was really interesting how quickly this caught on and how quickly it became ubiquitous at home to say, Alexa, turn on the lights. It just became really easy to do that with a simple interface um, that was really conversational and people are really comfortable doing that because it's a natural way of interacting. It was, it was really amazing after Alexa was announced and in the home, how quickly developers started building Alexa skills or voice applications, and it has completely taken off. So quickly, we had people building things outside of the home. And one of the really interesting places that we saw sort of an explosion of interest in Alexa and voice skills was in higher education. So in 2017, we had some really cool things being done by early adopters like Arizona State University, um, Georgia Tech. Um, Arizona State is a great example. So they started actually putting Echo devices in their engineering dorm room, Tooker House, and students were instantly able to do the standard things that you could do with Alexa, those first party skills. But ASU also built a custom skill that allowed students to engage with campus information so they could ask things about events or what the hours were in the cafeteria. I think the really cool thing is ASU also challenged these engineering students to start actually building Alexa skills or voice applications. So they're really helping those kids think about how they build in the future and sort of letting them be those pioneers for voice applications. So we're really excited to see just these small trends that we're just kind of picking up this past year around higher education. Similarly, outside of higher education, our AWS enterprise customers were coming to us with really cool things that they were wanting to do in the enterprise with Alexa and Echo devices. But there was a problem. 
Um, if you have an Echo device at home, you've sat and used the Alexa Companion app and set up that device. It's pretty easy if you're doing one at a time. If you're setting up 50 devices or 100 or even 1,000 devices, that becomes really time intensive and it's a really heavy lift. So our customers asked us for a simple way that they could deploy, manage Echo devices as well as skills. And so we actually built this Alexa management console called Alexa for Business. That console lives within the AWS console and it's a simple and user-friendly way that you can build Alexa skills for your enterprise and then manage that experience all within the console. Um, so one of the other things that enterprise customers were asking us for is the ability to build a skill that they would only expose to their organization. So we had financial customers coming to us that wa they wanted to do really interesting things with an Alexa skill, but it may touch the most sensitive pieces of data that they have and these really sensitive workflows. So they wanted a way to build a skill and only expose that to their organization. So that's another benefit of Alexa for business. You can build an Alexa skill called a private skill and just keep that exposed only internally to your end users or your students. So rather than having to publish a skill to the public skill store, you could build multiple private skills internally at your organization and actually manage that experience with devices. The other interesting thing that Alexa for Business allows customers to do is assign a location to a device. So you can assign a room profile to a device and actually give that device certain characteristics based on where it is. So you can think about a device in a conference room or a lobby, and they may have different characteristics that you'd want to associate based on where that is, and then a different skill that you'd want that device to be able to invoke when someone walks up to it. So all of that's possible with Alexa for Business. In addition to our customers, we launched this product in, in November 2017 with customers like WeWork and Brooks Brothers. In addition to them sort of coming to us with these really cool use cases, we also saw a lot of partners building really interesting solutions in the space. Um, one of those partners is Npowered, and they've built a really cool solution specifically for higher ed that leverages Alexa for business. So with that, I'd like to invite Joel and Soman from Npowered up to the stage to show us what they've built. Thank you, Brooke. How's everyone doing? Thank you. Yeah, so my name is Soman, and uh, I am a co-CEO and co-founder of Empowered, so in short, Coco. And, and you know, I'm gonna talk about what we have built, why we have built it, and I'm gonna go a little deep on the architecture piece of things. But uh, let me start by asking you a question. Actually, two questions. One is, what do you think this acronym, YAVA, stand for? And uh, why do we need it? And what does the number 2 million and the number 46 mean to you? Puzzling, right? <laughs> so YAVA actually stands for yet another voice application. And I say that because uh, as Brooke was saying, there's already 40,000 plus uh, voice applications out there. So why do we need one more voice application? And uh, the two million is actually, there were two million enrolled students in 2017. Think about that, two million enrolled students in 2017. And only 46% of them graduate. And that's an average. That's not even counting the schools that couldn't meet that quota. Now we had to solve this, right? Two million students enrolling and 46, only 46% 46 uh, graduating. So how do you solve that equation? That's where we come in, we are empowered. And having said that, um, what we have built is we have accumulated and gathered all the student data in one place and then uh, looking at the systems, we tried to figure out how best to serve it up to the students so that the student can use it when they need it, wherever they are. Because we have, we have to bring the university to the students, uh, other than student always coming to the university. And I didn't know anybody better than my longtime friend and co-founder, Joel Evans, who is not only an Alexa champion, but one of the smartest presentation layer person that I know. Joel? Wow. So I, I think this is when I have to say really nice things about 
So I'm yes. In, do I do I advance a slide before I say really nice things, or I do them right here? Um, no, but in all seriousness, so Soman came to me. Um, I've got a, a, a long background with emerging technology, as Soman mentioned. I'm also an Alexa champion, and we'll take you through a little bit later some of the other stuff we've been doing and I've done in my past with earlier versions of Alexa for Business. But really, the, the key was you know, the problem that we're trying to solve. And to Soman's point, he's a wizard with, with data and architecture and really very innovative there. And he was looking at that problem at the university and talking to me about it and saying, I've got all these systems. They don't talk to each other. You know, I could certainly unify them, but then what do we do from there? So we started talking about some of the cool things we could do with Alexa. And really, the ideal scenario would be to have Alexa be their friend, right? So it's like talking to a friend, and that's really the best way to, to do any kind of a, a design for a voice interface. So you want to ask a question, you want to get an answer. So as you start thinking through, as you start thinking through, you know, what, what could something like that look like? Imagine the, the student in their dorm room, and they're asking questions like, uh, I don't know, you know, what's my next class, or what events are happening, or what's the status of my application, or you know, a whole bunch of different, well, you know what, why don't I, uh, why don't I let her speak for herself? Alexa, start Husky Helper. Come on. Is this the fun of a live demo? <laughs> Joel, welcome back. The Northeastern Husky Helper is designed to answer your Northeastern questions. What would you like to know? When is my next class? Your next class is Calculus 2 for Science and Engineering on Thursday at 8 a.m. What else would you like to know? What events are happening today? On Wednesday, there will be Intro to Sale, Part 2, Putting It Into Action. Are you on social media? participate in online research study located at online survey and 8 to 20 13 Alexa, year old kids need where can I do laundry most traditional residence halls and apartment complexes have washing machines and dryers laundry books is cash Alexa, that has been placed on your why do I have a hold you currently have a hold titled financial hold dated February 21st 2018 what else would you like to know who am I? You, my friend, are Joe Levins. Should you ever forget your name again, I am here to help you find your way. What else would you like to know? Cancel. Just a reminder, be sure to check back to learn about new and upcoming events. Goodbye. So what do you think? So the fun part about making a skill is there's a lot of different ways of creating them. But I think the, the true magic here, and I'll give someone a chance to walk you through the magic since this is a technical session. The true magic is how do you connect all those systems? How do you unify all that data? And how do you have the seamless experience that I just demonstrated? So with that, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Joel. That was very well executed. <laughs> So, you know, this problem about disparate data is not just a university problem. Many of you work for a complex organization, and I'm pretty sure you, at one point in your working life, you have come across problems where a lot of systems are brought online to address a specific problem. But before you know it, there's a duplication of data, there's no proper data governance, and then you are trying to aggregate it and find out you know, what's the total view of the customer or what is the 360 degree view of the student, et cetera, et cetera. And universities are no different. Universities, on top of that, the fact that universities are not competent in technology, that's not their competency, right? Their competency is giving students a fantastic education and setting them in the right foot towards their career. So for the university, it's always a challenging problem when there is a lot of system, and which there are, and uh, how to aggregate that data. So to solve that, we at Empowered, what we did was we started with the source of the data, right? And we identified, okay, we said, we created pre-built APIs for ERP system, like 
uh, like uh, PeopleSoft and Banner, which is very common in the higher ed industry. And then we also created hooks and uh, real-time web hooks for Salesforce, uh, which does marketing and sometimes it does application management as well. And then, of course, PowerFades, which does financial aid. And then your LMS systems, the Canvas and your Acrobatics and uh, you know, Blackboard, you name it. And of course, every university has a few homegrown systems that we are all aware of. So what we first did was we created web hooks, brought the data through Amazon's API gateway, and put them in a data lake, an Amazon data lake, an AWS data lake. And what that allows you to do is, because we know that universities are already trying to solve this problem, so we actually give them this as a value-added service, that you have a data lake that you're looking for, because sooner or later all universities are looking to aggregate that data and put it in a place where we can act, they can actually see the entire picture of the student and not just partial view. And then from that, using our special sauce, we create a 360 degree for ourselves and serve it up through Lambda functions and you know, skills which I'm pretty sure you're aware of. However, the challenge is not serving the skills or not aggregating the data. Yes, it's challenging, but the challenge is when you have a university like, say, Northeastern, right, with 18,000 enrolled students, how do you serve it to 18,000 students with 18,000 devices? And trust me, you do not want to try to do this manually. And we did it for a pilot of 60 people, and we learned it the very hard way. And to talk about how Alexa for Business actually relieves you from this pain is Joel back again. Joel back again. Uh, so as Soma was saying, so we did a pilot for Northeastern. And show of hands, how many people have hooked up a, an Echo device, an Echo Dot, et cetera? OK. So now imagine doing that for over 100 devices manually, because that's actually what we went through, because we're crazy. So each one of those devices had to be discovered individually. We had to grab the Mac ID. We then had to put the Mac ID into a spreadsheet, associating that Mac ID with the, with the Northeastern ID. We also had to look at the serial number on the box that the dot came with, because they don't put the serial number on the bottom of the dot, because that would be too easy. And then I actually employed the services of my 10-year-old, and he sat there with a label maker, and we typed out the, the Mac IDs uh, the serial numbers and actually put them on the bottom of the dot. And the whole reason we did all that is because we needed to then associate that with the university systems so we could whitelist all the dots. And we needed to match them all together because if anyone called with any problem at all, we needed to know who got which dot and whether or not that dot even matched the right, uh, that Mac ID even matched the right serial number. So it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, it's, that was a really good time. So right away, there was an immediate benefit as we started thinking about it for what Alexa for Business could do. And I personally knew that because, uh, show of hands, how many people heard about Alexa for Hospitality, that announcement that just came out? All right, so you guys will hear more about it. But the, the reason I bring it up is over two years ago, I worked on a project where we deployed Echoes in hotel rooms at a Crown Plaza, using it as a virtual concierge. So way ahead of its time, very early days of Alexa for Business, and again, right away, especially after I went through the painful process of doing the pilot the way I just described it, it was like, okay, well, obviously Alexa for Business is the way to go going forward. So to take you through how much easier that would be, and I don't have a slide to represent it, but I'll do some crazy visuals. Um, just imagine that you've got your Alexa for Business console. It actually can discover all of those dots and capture all of those Mac IDs, and I can run a little script and grab all of those Mac IDs. And the other cool part is you right away know if it's in a, um, in a managed device scenario, you know whether or not the device is active or not. So we had some troubleshooting scenarios where we were wondering, is it a hardware failure, is it a skill failure, is it an authentication failure? So as we all can agree, it's nice to have it all in one nice little console. So we're really looking forward to, uh, to doing that on our, on our next rollout, which will be uh, many thousands of devices that you'll be hearing about soon. Um, and um, that's, that's really the, the gold, is Alexa for Business not only makes it really easy to enroll and manage the devices, but as Brooke mentioned earlier, when we create the skill, you have 
two different ways of distributing a skill, and with Alexa for Business, you can distribute a private skill. So the other pain point that we're looking forward to solving is we released it, and right away we knew some things that we wanted to add, but we were concerned that by pushing a new update, we potentially would interrupt the experience of the student. And if you guys have worked with students, you can understand that if you interrupt their experience, the likelihood of re-engaging them is, uh, is pretty low. So with Alexa for Business, we can 100% control exactly how that's gonna flow. So we're really, really excited about what that's gonna mean for our future deployments. So quickly a little bit about the pilot, because it's one thing for me to say it was hugely successful. It's another thing to actually have quotes from the students. So here are some of the quotes. And what was really cool is you saw the quick demo and there's way over 20 different things that they can ask. And we connected to so many different systems. And what I showed you a little bit of is when I asked it where I can do laundry, I, I don't have to connect to a system for that. That's a frequently asked question that's pretty straightforward. But the more complex stuff is, is really where the magic happens. But what we heard from the students is they absolutely loved it. And some of the use cases were um, they were lying in bed and they were asking what their next class is. Now, if you're not in, in school and you're older like I am, you remember what your next class is, but it seems like students these days don't remember what their next class is when they're waking up in the morning. So, uh, And they would brush their teeth and ask questions. But I think the coolest thing about it is, and really what our goal was in the whole design, if they think about it and say, oh yeah, I got to remember to do X, Y, and Z, in the time that they're thinking about it, they're in their dorm room or really anywhere they want to be on campus where they can have an Alexa-enabled device, they can just ask the device and get the answer. And that's really the, the magic of the whole thing. So not only do we manage it and distribute it, but it's instantly accessible. But instead of reading the quotes, why don't we hear what the students really had to say? Oh. Olivia, welcome back. The Northeastern Husky Helper is designed to answer your Northeastern questions. What would you like to know? Hello, um, it's Francis Story for the Echo Dot Beta, and here I am with my Echo Dot, my Alexa. Hi, my name's Catherine. I'm a Northeastern student, and for the past few weeks, I have been beta testing an Amazon Alexa skill called Husky Helper on this cool Echo Dot. Hi, my name's Jonathan Lowe, and I've been using the Amazon Echo Dot and the Husky Helper skill for the past month or so. My name is Connor Nilsson, and I was a beta tester for the Amazon Echo Dot add-on uh, from NU Voice Husky Help. Hello, my name is Sophia Anderson, and I participated in the Amazon Echo Dot study through Empowered. Um, this is Eric Kim with his Amazon Alexa for the beta testing. I'm Andrew Agarwal, and I'm part of the eco beta testing for the Amazon Alexa with the Husky Helper skill. Alexa, how do I get more financial aid? Originally, when I had first heard about the uh, voice-powered assistants, I didn't really imagine something that would be as helpful as this device has become. Um, it's basically everything you need to know as a Northeastern student. It'll tell you, like, it can, you can ask it things. Um, so you can be like, what's my next class? What classes am I enrolled in? Who's your advi my academic advisor? Who's my financial aid advisor? Uh, Overall, the past month, I've loved using my Echo Dot, and I've used it for a variety of reasons, including setting alarms, reminders, setting a timer for when I go do my laundry, and of course, playing music. Alexa, what day is it? Um, I really like the Husky Helper. I think it has, is a great idea. Before, so this was a really fun experience, and me and all my roommates had a lot of fun. Alexa, ask Husky Helper what classes I have today. On Saturday, you have no classes. So what we really loved about this, there, I mean, there are so many things. I think we, we had an idea of what questions the students were going to ask, and then we, we took advantage of what Northeastern had available to us, and we were able to look at, at those top questions that are, that are most asked across different venues. So we, we powered all of that. Um, and then really what we're excited about, as I said, is just what you can do with Alexa for Business. You've got a couple of different ways of using it. There's the one way that you saw here where the students are interacting. They're getting their direct experience. That's known as the enrolled user model. And then another one is a shared device model where you can imagine these devices being in common areas. And now you're not asking personal information, but you're asking more of those frequently asked questions. And again, with the magic of Alexa for Business, it's all beautifully managed. You can see exactly what's going on. You can even see all the analytics. So, so enough about me talking. Let me, uh, let me bring up uh, Northeastern to tell you 
a little bit more about the pilot and uh, what might be coming soon. Can you just advance it for you? I had one slide. I didn't think I had a slide. I'm Madeline Estabrook. I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs at Northeastern. Um, you met some of our students who were part of this pilot. Northeastern was very excited to incubate Empowered um, and to be the site uh, for the pilot. Uh, we're always looking for technology that engages our students, that helps the student experience, and if we go all the way back to the equation that Soman put up to start with, when we're talking about retention, we're talking about graduation, and that's our goal in higher education, is to get our students to graduate and move on to do the wonderful things and the new leaders of the new world. We know that what works is making sure that our students feel that they belong. So the more that we can engage them, the more that we can engage them where they are, the better experience they have. And that's exactly what this does. Our students told us, and you heard them say, that um, whether it's, when's my laundry gonna be done? When is my class? Set an alarm for 15 minutes because I'm going back to sleep because I'm not going to the class and I really don't know what day of the week it is. Um, our students are always moving. We know that they're 24 seven and we're trying to create solutions for them so that they don't have to change what they're doing to deal with the business hours that the university may keep. What's really exciting in this piece is that we're not just feeding them back information that they could have found on a web page or that they could have looked up and then find out that it's Saturday and I can't call until Monday, but instead they can find the basic answers and the personalized and customized information that's available through this allows them to find out their own information. They don't have to figure out which office do I have to call. They don't have to figure out where do I have to look. They don't have to stand in lines. They don't have to wait on the phone on hold or in any other queue. They can find exactly what they need for their personal problem at that moment and continue the work that they're doing. Now we all know when we sit on hold for an amount of time, not only is it a waste of time, but more importantly, we get a wee bit frustrated. And I can tell you that college kids get very frustrated. College kids wants, want things when they want them, at the time they want them, and they really don't care about anything else except for what they need at that time. And this really does start to satisfy that need for them. Our students are extremely excited by this and they've already offered us the enhancements that they want of more information that will work. But one of the things that we are so proud of is that what this did for our students was to lessen frustration increase their student experience. It also made sure that they had more of that belonging to the university. Finally, what we know about um, science, what we know about the science of learning, what we know about the science of memory, is that this also reduced their cognitive load, which meant that they could go back to the business of why they're in higher education. They can go back to learning and they can spend more of their time learning not who their co-op advisor is, not where their financial aid office is, but whatever the work is that they're doing. Their important work, this allows them to open up the space to do those kinds of things in learning that are so uniquely human, that brings out the creativity, that brings out the innovation, that brings out the leadership and the empathy that our students are bringing to the problems of the world. Now, I'm just a little bit proud of our students, but we're also very proud of the work that we've done with Empowered, and we're very excited to continue to build out voice with the enhancements our students have asked for, as well in much broader ways. So to talk about what's next, I'm gonna turn the mic over to Erin. Hello, my name is Erin Smith. I'm the AVP for Online Experiential Learning at Northeastern. And my team is dedicated to designing uh, the learner, learner experience and the learning experiences through uh, instructional design. So I'm really excited about the potential here. And when we think about, uh, I've really dedicated my career to the, the digital aspects of learning. And one of the things that we hear most often in that space is really about the, the, the isolation and the feeling of being alone. So when I hear some of the the, the feedback from our students, with, what, what's really striking to me is that uh, how much of the anxieties of 
navigating our complex university systems um, is, is just brought uh, to, just reduced in, in, a, in a great deal. Um, and as Madeline was saying, how that can free them up to really focus on um, why they're here uh, in the first place. Some of the things that we're excited about uh, pushing on, uh, we've been starting with thinking, you know, what are those things that really enhance the student experience? Uh, we like to say, let's make the easy things easy and the hard things worthwhile. <laughs> um, so looking for those opportunities in terms of uh, typical FAQs and, and those types of things, but where we want to push this is really in how we actually build skills um, for, for students. So uh, and, uh, we're a Blackboard customer and we've uh, been thinking about how to build in um, uh, different types of study tools. And over, over time as we've built these pretty extensive uh, digital repositories uh, um, that become available, uh, what, what really becomes exciting is how you, how you can put that into the context um, in the moment, and we can get to a truly personalized experience. So some of the things that we're thinking about would be um, uh, Alexa as a study buddy, um, building in pop quizzes, um, really mining some of those sort of test banks that are available to us, and then freeing up the designer to really think about how to uh, design that so that, that the, the students are building on their skills, building on their prior learning. And we'll build uh, some testing around that so that we'll, we'll approach it uh, with an outcomes-based approach and really understand more about learning and what our students can teach us about learning. So thank you. Brooke? Thank you, Erin and Madeline. That was really awesome to hear some of the things that you guys have heard from your students and some of the things that you're thinking about. Um, we're so excited about the potential here, uh, not just with Northeastern, but to see what other institutions are gonna build for their students. And hopefully this gives you a bit of in inspiration to take home to your students to really start thinking about how you can build voice experiences that will help your students engage. So I'm just gonna leave you with a few thoughts on where we see this space going, and again, why we think it's so interesting right now, and why 2018 is the year for voice. Um, so I, I gave you a little background when I started, uh, just kind of helping you understand where Amazon fits into the puzzle. And in, as I said, in 2014, we launched the Echo device. Since then, conversational UIs have really taken off in the home. Um, it's really transformed the way we live. And it's funny, even after I had an echo in my own home for just a couple of months, when I'd check into a hotel when I was traveling, I would instantly ask Alexa what the temperature was in the morning when I was getting ready. And it was kind of a funny experience because this is the space I work in, and I was just so used to having that in my own home, in my own morning routine, that it, it was very funny when you realize that that's not everywhere yet. Um, since 2014, conversational UIs have expanded and they're starting to include other people and contextual inputs. So Joel and Soman kind of walked you through how they've built a solution that brings in data sets from all these different disparate sources. And this is where Alexa's skills are starting to get really interesting. Now you can bring in information from all these different places and you can get an experience that's really a, a full experience and it's not just a question and answer in one direction, but it's really a, an experience that kind of can span what you're doing and follow you day to day. Now we've seen with the uh, launch of Alexa for Business, some enterprise customers building really cool things in the enterprise, in the workplace, and conversational UIs are really expanding outside of the home and starting to follow us in our, in our daily life from the morning when we wake up to the office where we can get into our office, go into a conference room and ask Alexa to start a meeting. Um, it's really amazing to see how far we can take this as, as people start building really cool things in different areas of our life. This is sort of the big picture. We really think that Alexa is going to be everywhere and she's gonna follow you around and, and help you in your day-to-day -day life, but she's also gonna know based on your preferences what things you might want, what sort of routines you like. And this is where it gets really cool with some of the AI and machine learning services that we have. You can layer on all of this additional knowledge and Alexa's just gonna get smarter as more people build. Again, I, I mentioned earlier that since we launched Echo Devices, there's more than 40,000 public skills in the skill store. So that doesn't even account for the skills that people are building in beta or private skills that may be only exposed to an organization. But the pace here has been incredible. 
and Amazon's been really surprised and delighted by how quickly customers have taken this and really made it their own. So we cannot wait to see what's next, and we really think that higher education is one of the next verticals that's just gonna take this and run with it. We're really excited to see what you build, and can't wait for next year and sort of what we're gonna be announcing here. Hopefully there'll be some really cool things that you've built, that your students have built, and we'll just continue to see this grow really quickly. Um, here are some resources for getting started, and so we'll leave this up on, on the screen just for a minute. Um, this presentation will be available after the session, after the summit, so you can absolutely go to any of these sites and sort of get started with Alexa for Business and understanding what those capabilities are. You can also visit the AWS education site and learn more about some of the other services that we offer for education, both higher education as well as K through 12, also for our ed techs and learning companies. Um, with that, we're not actually going to do public FAQ here. Um, we're, we're just going to stay up front for about 10 minutes, so feel free to come up and ask us questions. We'd love to let you know sort of what we've done here. Um, Northeastern's happy to talk to you about what they're planning, and you can absolutely ask NPower to get into the weeds a bit with the technology they've built. It's really cool. Having been in this space for a couple of years, I am so excited to see this kind of solution that's bringing together all sorts of different pieces of data and making Alexa that much smarter. So please come up and ask us questions. We'd love to help you get started. Thank you.